who have joined us this morning, especially those of you who are visiting us. Thanks for coming. We're so glad you're here. Pray God will bless you as you hear his word with us and sing his prayer. Here's an understatement. Food is important. Well, God can't live without food. Um, our Lord knows that. And he provides us with our daily bread. Sometimes by miraculous means, we'll hear this morning again about how he provided for his Old Testament people of Israel with manna in the wilderness. We heard a few weeks ago how Jesus provided for the crowds that came to see him, 5,000 plus, with food from miraculously from just a couple of fish and five little loaves of bread. But we have such greater needs than just the needs of, of, of our body, just food for our bodies. Jesus came not just to give us food for our bodies, he is the bread of life. He is the one who provides for the eternal needs of our soul, not just the temporary needs of our body. But how lazy it is for us to focus only or mostly on the immediate, temporary, physical needs of the body, instead of looking to him for the more important, the eternal needs of our soul. He gives us both, but may the focus of our lives and our faith always be on the eternal. That will be the focus of our worship this morning. Let's join in our first hymn. And please note that there's an awkward page turn. Sorry about that. Just, just the way it works. Uh, we'll be singing in Christ alone. And it's printed there on the page number three in the bulletin. But you'll be having to flip back and forth. So God bless our worship this morning. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and am trusting in my Savior, as they need, 
take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who had gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, two omers for each person. And the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He said to them, this is what the Lord commanded Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, save whatever is left, and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning, as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be it. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. The people of Israel called the bread manna. It was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. This is the word of our Lord. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 16. The needs of the body, like bread or health, are definitely important, and our Lord knows that and supplies them. But far more important are the needs of our soul. The needs of our body are temporary. The needs of our soul are eternal. Turn to God for those, and may that be our focus. We'll use these words as the basis for the sermon this morning. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Alleluia. Alleluia. According to St. John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 24. We have a continuation of our series of readings, although we've shifted from the Gospel of Mark to the Gospel of John, as we've been hearing the last few weeks, how Jesus fed the crowd, the 5,000 plus people, how he fed them their bodies as well as their souls with his word. And now they turn to him for the needs of their body, but they make that their focus instead of the needs of their soul. Looking to Jesus for bread for life instead of looking to Jesus as the bread of life. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will do. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. 
So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let's join in confessing our faith in the, the God who gives us the bread of life, our triune God. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it on page 9. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue with our next one.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God's word for our meditation this morning is the second lesson we heard a few minutes ago. The Holy Spirit inspired St. Paul to write these words in his second letter to the Corinthians chapter 4. He says, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, the bread of life. As I look around this morning, I see quite a number of you wearing glasses. I suspect that some others of you who are not wearing glasses are like me, and you're wearing contact lenses. When it comes to, to needing some kind of vision correction, uh, experts say about 75% of our, in our nation of adults wear some kind of corrective lenses. There's pretty much basically two main problems that need to be corrected with our vision by glasses or contact lenses. On the one hand, there are those people who can see things that are close up, but not focus on things that are far away. We call it being nearsighted. And that's what the majority of kids and young people that need glasses, that's what their problem is. But then, as you get a little older, you hit 40s or 50s, and all of a sudden you start noticing you can't focus on the things that are close up, and you're holding things a lot farther away, and then you know it. You need bifocals, or at least reading glasses. But there's another kind of vision problem. It's one that is far more widespread than, than the kinds of problems that you need glasses or contact lenses for and it's far more serious. This is not a problem of eyesight. It is a problem of faith. In our gospel this morning, we heard about some people 2,000 years ago in Judea who suffered from this faith vision problem. They had just the previous day been fed miraculously by Jesus, and now, that's all they could focus on. Bread. The needs of their body. That's what they wanted Jesus to keep on giving to them. Instead of focusing on the far greater needs, the needs of their soul, that Jesus came to give them. But it isn't just 2,000-year-old people in a faraway country that had that, that faith vision problem. <coughs> they do too. It's so easy for us to focus on the here and the now, the things that are close up, the things of our body, the needs of our physical bodies, instead of recognizing and focusing <laughs> the eternal needs of our souls, which Jesus came to provide for us. This morning, let's take a closer look at the words of the Apostle Paul as he encourages us to look through the eyes of faith. And when we do that, we will see the needs of our bodies, these temporary close-up needs. The eyes of faith focus on the things that are distant, the things that are unseen, the things that are eternal. It's really important to look at things that are close up, though. We don't discount that. I mean, if, if you are one of those, like, it's like so many of us that, that needs bifocals or reading glasses or something else to read close up stuff, you know how frustrating that is when you forget them. And then you try to read a text message or a, or a label on something in the store and you just can't focus on that. It's also important, of course, to focus on the things that are close up in our lives. And by close up, I mean those, those immediate, obvious physical needs that everybody has. The need for food, the need for shelter, the need for clothing, the need for health. Those are close up and obvious and important. And your Lord knows that. He knows what you need. That's why God provided manna in the wilderness for 40 years for his people in Israel. That's why Jesus provided 
the bread and the loaves, or the bread and the fish for the 5,000 plus people when he taught them that day along the Sea of Galilee. We could add to those needs of, of, of body, food and clothing and shelter and health. We could add other things like joy in life, joy that comes from family, personal relationships. We could even add things like a, our interests, our hobbies, the things that we love to do, spending time outdoors, sports, recreation, reading books, whatever it is. Those are important. They are gifts from God to be enjoyed, and God knows that. But here's the problem. It's so easy for us to be so nearsighted, so short-sighted in our lives that that's all we focus on, those close-up things, instead of recognizing the far more important things and focusing on the eternal things. That's what St. Paul is encouraging us, as well as with his original readers in Corinth 2,000 years ago this morning, when he speaks of the things that often preoccupy us and cause us to focus everything on, which especially can, can include problems, suffering, pain. Paul calls those things light and momentary. I, I think somebody might be tempted to think, well, easy for you to say, Paul, you're not going through what I'm going through right now. What do you know about that? Well, let's remember who Paul was and what he experienced. Paul definitely knew suffering. Paul was frequently beaten, imprisoned, ultimately executed. Yeah, he knew what suffering was. He wasn't discounting that, but he's putting it into <laughs> and that's what he means when he, when he says in, in our reading this morning, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. The key to understanding that sentence is the phrase, fix our eyes. You see, there is a difference between seeing something and focusing on something. It is important to see the immediate physical needs, whether that's our own or the needs of our neighbor. The flooding that our community experiences, and some of you have been affected directly by it. That's important. It's important that we take care of ourselves. It's important that we look out for our neighbors and help them, too. St. Paul isn't saying disregard them, but he is putting things into perspective and saying don't be so short-sighted that that's all we focus on. He says that what is seen is temporary. And that is so true of everything in this life. It's true of the problems. It's true of the pleasures. It's true of the, the challenges. It's true of the good things, the bad things, all of the above. Those are all very, very temporary. None of them are going to last. So that, that problem that, that we're so focused on, you put so much thought and energy and time into, it's going to go away. One way or the other, it's going to go away. It's not forever. That, that pleasure, that, that thing we love doing that we spend so much of our time and effort and money on, <coughs> that too is temporary. There's going to come a day that those things we like to do, we're not going to be able to do it anymore. That object that we think is so important for us to have to be happy, it's going to wear out. And even if it doesn't wear out during your lifetime, you're not going to take it with you. All of those things, while important, and God knows that, they're temporary. And we're being short-sighted. We're being nearsighted in our faith if we focus on those and make those the focus of our lives. Now, that's exactly what was going on with that crowd of people that, that Jesus had come across First of all, at the Sea of Galilee, then in Capernaum, when they followed him there, um, God knew their needs of body. Jesus provided for them. But then all they could do was look at that. They just focused on that near stuff. Instead of recognizing what was even greater need in their lives, instead of looking to Jesus to provide for that, because that's why he came. 
I think we all understand how important it is to have regular vision exams. Most of us probably go yeah, once a year anyway to have our eyes checked. We should anyway. It's even more important that we check our faith of vision regularly. We need to ask ourselves on a regular basis, what, what's the focus of my life? What is it that I am spending the most time and energy and effort and money on in my life? Am I focused just on these immediate, physical, temporary things? Or do I look beyond that and recognize the far greater ones as well and make that my focus? Pretty sure that all of us, as we examine our lives and examine our faith vision, are going to see some problems. It's so easy to get caught up in only the here and the now, the immediate needs, the immediate wants, and focus on them instead of the things that are really important. God forgive us. He does. For our nearsightedness when it comes to what's important. God, give us a greater vision to see, to focus on what is important. And here's what St. Paul says about what's important. He says, what is seen is temporary. But we fix our eyes on what is unseen. What is unseen is eternal. So what is unseen? Well, let's just name a few things that we can't see. Let's start at the top. God. Can't see God, can you? <laughs> he's there, and he's real. But God's love for us in Jesus Christ, his son, our savior. That is also something you can't see physically with our eyes. But how important and eternal that is. How about the forgiveness of sins? What's more vital to us in our lives than that? It's unseen. Or there is this. Heaven. Can't see that. But it's your home. It's eternal. So the question is, how do you focus on something you can't see? And the answer is, through faith. Faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Through the eyes of faith, we see and believe in our God who we don't see right now with our physical eyes. Through the eyes of faith, we embrace his love and forgiveness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Through the eyes of faith, we see a forever perfect home in heaven. It would be so horrible and difficult to lose one's vision. People do, and it's difficult to lose your vision in life. But how much worse it is when people don't have the vision to see what's really important, our eternal future. You know, there's so many people in our world, and you and I probably know a bunch of them, who don't see anything <coughs> beyond the here and the now. And for them, they feel like life is just uh, this short-lived series of, of bad things happening, sprinkled with some really good things happening, and then it comes to an end, and that's it. Wow. That's sad. But by God's grace, you have been given the gift of faith vision. He's created in your heart and mind a faith that sees and believes and embraces and rejoices in and finds peace and, and fulfillment and purpose in knowing his love in Jesus Christ, our forgiveness, our forever home with him in heaven. It's important that we maintain our vision health. We take care of your eyes. God only gave you two of them. It's far more important that we maintain our faith vision. How does that happen? Well, God gave you your gift of faith through his means of grace, through the word, the gospel that comes to us in the word of God and in the sacraments. And that's exactly how he maintains our vision of faith. When we find ourselves separated from his means of grace, when we aren't 
in his word, when we're not in his house, when we're not receiving Christ's body and blood in the sacrament, our faith vision is going to get weak. And that's when we start to lose sight of what's important and what's eternal distance and look only at the visible, immediate things of life. But the opposite is also true. As we stay in the Word, grounded in, in God's Word, as we receive His Gospel and Word and Sacrament, that's when our faith vision becomes sharper. That's when we, by God's grace, can focus not on the things that are immediate. No, we don't disregard them, but we focus on the true needs that God has provided every one of them for us through Jesus, the bread of God. Praise God for your gift of faith. Thank God for his forgiveness for so often how we fail to look beyond the immediate needs of our lives. God, give us that clear vision of faith to always focus on the eternal, unseen things. Have forgiveness Jesus. Our Savior. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. Christ Jesus. Please stand. Let's join in singing the Create in Me. You'll find that at page 10. Uh -huh.
You may be seated, and we'll join in singing your next one.
Sunday. No, no special occasion, just, just a chance to get together. And then another potluck, go figure, uh, in September, September 8th. So that's the Sunday after Labor Day. Um, but that's going to be in conjunction with a special presentation and uh, service with the guest preacher and presenter that, that weekend. Uh, as I mentioned last Sunday, uh, Pastor Mark Parsons, who uh, is from the Boise, Idaho area, he is a, a, with the Wells affiliated ministry called Truth and Love Ministry, which, uh, which is focused on reaching out to uh, LDS people with the good news about Jesus. So we're going to have a presentation that will kick off our, our fall uh, Bible class at Sunday school time uh, at 9 a.m. We're going to have worship where he'll be the guest preacher. Um, we'll have a special meal right after that. And then right, right after the meal downstairs, we'll have um, kind of part two of this presentation. Uh, if you only make it to one of them, that's great. It'd be great if you get it to both of them. But there's a sign-up sheet for that potluck as well. So take a look at that on the board market calendar. Does anybody have any other announcements they'd like to share with us? That lesson this week.